Creating music in GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad is very, very cool. But the problem is these things have limited amounts of space. So even if you've got 128 or 256 gig or more likely 64, 32 or even 16 gig of space on your device, you're going to quickly fill that up with the GarageBand projects you create. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can back up your entire project files to your PC and to any other cloud service that you like from there. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete. This is Studio Live Today, where I help you create, record, and release your best music. And in this video, we're going to be helping you organize those creative music projects by showing you how we can actually transfer not only our project files, but even our finished WAV files over to our PC. We're going to do that using iTunes file sharing, and it's actually easier than ever to do that in iOS 11. So let's jump down into the phone now, and I'll show you how we set up at that end, and then we'll jump back here into the PC and I'll show you how we can do these transfers. Let's go. Okay, so here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone. Now, what a lot of folks do here is under locations, they go to iCloud Drive and then they come down to GarageBand for iOS and this is where they create and store all their projects. And there's a good reason for that because this will back up your projects to iCloud automatically, which means that you can see here that some of these have these download arrows, which mean that they're on the cloud, but they're not actually stored on this phone. And I find that a little bit frustrating because sometimes I'll create a project and then it'll offload it to create some space and then I'll have to re-download it and I'll be out on a mobile connection and I won't want to do that. So I use this for some of these as you can see here, but what I've been doing more often, and yes, you have to trust yourself to do backups like I'm about to show you, is use the On My iPhone. And you can use a combination of these, which I'll talk about in a moment. So on my iPhone, if we go into GarageBand here, what this is doing is it's storing these 100% on my phone. So this is like the old school way back in iOS 10 and earlier, where you would have to store it here, and then you would have to manually share it over to iCloud Drive. So I tend to do a similar sort of thing now where I have my files stored here, and then if I do want to back them up or share them, I will copy them over to my on my to my iCloud Drive, and then I've got a copy that I know is going to be backed up. But if I'm working on a big project and I want to make sure it stays on my phone, like this file here, 2.27 gigabytes, my latest single here called Bully, I don't want that to have to be uploading and downloading constantly. So I'll have a backup version stored, but I also want to have just the version here on my iPhone. Now, the reason I'm showing you the on my iPhone GarageBand location is that this is the location that will share to iTunes. So what you used to have to do is come into your project, you'd select it like this, you would share, you would go project, and then you would have to actually manually share this to iTunes file sharing, and then it would become available in your share folder to be able to be imported into your computer and then copied across to a folder on your PC. You do not have to do that anymore. All you need to do is actually have a file stored in here and it will be in your iTunes file sharing. So all of these projects that we see here and even these WAV files, and any other file that I have stored in here will, uh, there's a picture file down there, anything that I have stored here goes into that file sharing. And, and the reason I have WAV files here is I actually use this for my exports of my projects as well. So for this song here, Bully, uh, I, you can see here, if it was called Baseball back then, that I've got the master of that here, this 82.7 meg master file, a WAV file stored in there. So let's, I'll show you quickly how I do that now, and then I promise we'll jump back to the PC and I'll show you how to do things at that end. But we'll use this as my actual example. So if we tap on select and we tap on Bully Master here, I'm just going to remaster, for want of a better word, by sharing, sharing the song, sharing an uncompressed WAV file. We'll go share and then we'll go save to file. Now we could go to iTunes here, but for this purpose, we're going to save to files because this is going to put it into our, we're going to choose to put it onto our on my iPhone section under GarageBand. So you can see how just doing this is going to allow you to sync up and copy over both the project file and the final WAV file. So we have it here. It's uh, gone into my iCloud drive where I stored it before. But if we come down to on my iPhone and go to GarageBand and tip, tap on add, it is going to now add that as a WAV file here. If we come down, we will have Bully Master. 
up the top, sorry, up the top there, there is that Bully Master WAV file. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over to the PC and I'm going to show you how we can see all of these files. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the Bully version 5 project there and I'm going to grab this new Bully Master, which is my mastered WAV file and copy a backup of those across to my PC so that I'm going to have a backup copy. And from there, I can transfer them wherever I like. I can share them uh, on uh, other cloud storages or do whatever I want to do, back them up to an external drive, any of that sort of caper. So let's jump back to the PC now that we've got this set up and I've showed you this side and get that done. Okay, so here we are in the PC. We've got iTunes loaded up here on the left. We've got a folder over here on the right ready to put my backup files into. The first thing we need to do is click on my phone icon here, which is going to go into my iPhone. And then over on the left, down at the bottom here, you'll see file sharing, which is a very cool option. If you don't use this for your other applications, then consider using it because it's very cool. We can come down here to GarageBand and we're going to click on GarageBand. And it'll take just a few moments because I have lots of documents in here. And now you'll notice, well, you may not notice because you didn't see them all there, but this is every different file that I have stored on my actual device. And you've got sort of two scroll bars here because it's not particularly well designed. So we scroll all the way down there and then we can scroll down here. So these are all my files. Now the dot band files. These are the GarageBand projects and they're dot band folders here because I'll show you once we copied across, but it's actually a folder structure here on the PC. Mac is a little bit different. Mac folks, you can uh, use other features as well. You can actually airdrop your projects to your Mac, but uh, I'll save that for someone who uses Macs. But you can use this same method. You're going to get the same thing show up here in iTunes, just the way that you'll copy them to your Finder. Is that what you call it in a Mac? I'm really not a Mac guy. Apologies. Um, so back Back onto topic, these .band files that we have here are your whole project. You'll also notice we've got some WAV files here, and we've even got some graphics files that I've put in here. You can put any file in here, and you can share it back to your PC. So let's find the files that we were looking for. We've got our Bully Master here, which is what we want, and we've got Bully version 5.band. Now, what it looks like we can do is click and drag and drop these out here, but you'll notice there that it doesn't actually work. So I don't know why they haven't implemented drag and drop functionality, but they haven't here. So we need to actually have that selected and then go down the bottom here and click save. And we're going to get a dialog box here. Now I've already got my folder here that I'm going to save to. So I'm just going to copy that location, paste it over here. And now go into this empty folder, I'm going to tap select, tap, click on select folder. And now what it's going to do, you can see up the top here, it's going to go copying files from Peter's iPhone and it's copying one of one. Now, because it's a two point whatever gig file and it's across a USB 2 uh, host connection here, it's going to take a little while. You can see my little blue line is going to go across there. So while it is doing that, uh, what you might have also asked, you might have noticed a file, sorry, a folder called the GarageBand file transfer folder which is also in within this on my iPhone folder. Now the GarageBand file transfer folder is okay, but what you'll notice here is that we can't actually go into it. So anything that's stored in here is in a folder. So to take this and put it out of, and to, to back it up, we need to back up the entire folder. So if you exported a file into your GarageBand file transfer folder thinking that's a great place to store it, well, exporting it out to here, you would have to take the whole folder out and then find the file in there. And if you can see here, it's 2.55 gigabytes bytes of my file transfer folder. So it's not the most convenient thing, but you can, once you've got something on your iPhone, you can move it to in and out of that transfer folder. And that is really designed for things going into GarageBand. So we've used that in the past for where we've been importing music or other audio files. We can copy them to there from another app, say in iOS, and then we can use that to import into our project. So uh, I just wanted to touch on that because you might've thought, well, hey, isn't a file transfer folder for transferring files? And yes, it sort of is, but it's an extra step. So I like to actually just throw things straight here into my, on my iPhone or on my iPad folder so that I can then copy them directly across and we're all good. Okay. Now, even with my rambling, uh, I didn't want you to have to watch all of that process. So I skipped ahead a little bit here, but that is now done. You can see at the top there. And if we go into here now, here is our dot band folder. And yes, it's a folder. We can go in here and you can see behind the scenes of how 
how all of this works. There's caches, there's freeze files, there's contents, there's all sorts of things in here. The media is probably the most interesting folder because what the media will have is all of the actual individual wave files of your mix. So you've got our classic stack here, that's our bass track. We've got all of my vocal tracks in here, all the different audio recorded tracks, and we've got my guitar tracks in here as well. There's images, which has nothing in it. There's recording, which has nothing in it. There's sampler, which has my sampler file. So it really depends on what you've actually put in your track as to what will show up here and and then there's things like the output folder which is all of the other little WAV files and things that oh that's interesting it's actually got the outputted WAV files of the projects yeah there's something I just learned I didn't know it did that so these are the versions that I've actually exported it saved a copy of those in the band file which is actually pretty awesome when you think about it because if you finish a mix and then you export the WAV file it puts the WAV file in an output folder, which now explains to me why some of my projects get so big because I export a bunch of different versions. So in this case, these are all 80 meg. So what's that? Oh, geez, five times eight. 400 meg of this file is just these different exported versions of the track. So there you go. I've learned something new doing this. There's other little random bits of files that we have in here. Anyway, uh, that wasn't the point, but uh, this .band file now, is ready to be archived to be copied and transferred anywhere because it's a standard windows structure file file folder get my words out then you can store it anywhere what i would recommend you do is if you use something like a zip you can uh, make a, a zip file of this you can compress it using windows here you can send to a compressed zip folder that way it'll just be one file so if you're sharing this say on dropbox and you want to send it to someone else i would zip it up just because those sort of things handle a single file a lot better than they handle a folder full of multiple files. So just an additional tip there for you if you were planning to share this uh, with someone else or to back it up to Dropbox, OneDrive, Google Drive, any of those. So pretty cool there. Now, the other thing I was going to show here, we'll come back out to here, is that and now that I know that it's actually uh, it's kept all these WAV files as part of there, but what I did is I've got this separate master. So when I did the mastering for this song, I had a separate mastering project and then we've got a separate master file which is actually this one here so this is the final master version that I had and to do this we can do the exact same thing in fact I'll show you another quick trick here you're probably already ahead of me with this but say we wanted both of these files we can actually control click we can also shift click to get a whole section and we can also control a if you want everything so say you wanted to just back up everything all you need to do is come in here let's not rename all those files come in here I'm just gonna click out of there Oh, see, now it's now it's making me try to rename them all. Oi, there we go. We've clicked out. Uh, we'd come in here, we'd click on one, we'd control A, we'd go down to the bottom, we'd click save, we'd select a folder, and then it would just save everything that we have. We have a backup of 100% of the stuff that we have on here. So that would be a quick and easy way to do that. The other thing we can do is use control clicking. So let's just do these. So we wanted these two versions. We'll control click, and then we'll come down the bottom here, and hit save and we're in our right project here we'll select that folder it's going to save those out it's going to be a lot quicker this time because it's just those two WAV files well a little bit quicker <laughs> and then it's going to transfer those across and they will pop up over here in my bully folder so what I can now be comfortable is that I've got my original dot band garage band project folder I've got my master WAV file here if I back this up I'm safe. And yes, you're probably ahead of me on this, but to bring something like this back into here, we use the reverse. I've chosen a really bad one here, actually, because it's a really giant one. So let's just do something else. Let's do something that I know is a very small file. So let's just use uh, this comeback. So I'm just going to do this and show you how this works. So we would come down here. Let's just say that we've saved this off and we'll put it in. Yep, we'll select the music folder. And we'll go select folder and it will copy that over to here. So now it's just here. Here's this comeback.band folder that's ready to go. Now let's just rename this so that we know that it's going to be something different. 
comeback.2, comeback2.band. And now you might be thinking that what we would do here logically is click on add file and then put this one in here. But because it's a folder, it will just go in and keep wanting you to open more folders. So it doesn't work. Ironically, what we have to do is drag and drop. Yeah, that's right. We can't drag and drop out, but we can drag and drop in. So we drag and drop that folder back into GarageBand. We come up here and where are we? We scroll right the way up and there we go. So we have our comeback.band and we have our comeback2.band. You can see there that the time and dates are the same and it's actually going to be the exact same project. But all I've done is taken it out, put it here and then taken it back in. So if you had a, a project that you'd archived a year ago, the same thing would apply. We would just grab it here, drag it across, drop it into GarageBand and we would be good to go. So there you go. That is how we can use the GarageBand iTunes file sharing to actually transfer folders or entire GarageBand projects from our phone to our computer, our PC here running Windows, and then from our Windows PC back onto our phone, keeping all of our project information intact and keeping our ability to back up all of the settings and all the details in those projects. And there you go. We went a little bit more in depth, but I just wanted to make sure that you had all of the information that you need. And now you should be an absolute guru at transferring those GarageBand.band folders from your phone or your iPad to your Windows PC and then back again. As I mentioned, doing it via a Mac is pretty similar, although you can also airdrop and using iCloud Drive. I've talked about that in the past and there'll be links that you'll be able to check out down below about other ways to share. But I just wanted to do this as an update because the previous version I did has kind of been outdated. You don't have to do a lot of the steps. It's actually a lot simpler and I wanted to show you how simple it can be to make sure that you keep your files backed up and you have those available. So thank you again for watching. If you've got comments, questions or suggestions about this or anything else recording or music related, you can drop that in the comments below and I'll see you on the next video. So there you go, you've now got no excuse to lose any of those awesome projects. We've got two more videos linked down below there. You can also subscribe to the channel by clicking in the top right up there or head on over to studiolivetoday.com for more audio goodness.